Hello and welcome back to my channel where I just do random stuff. I hope you are well this sunny morning. Unfortunately because it is sunny everybody has come out to mow their lawn so I hope that the audio is okay. So today I was going to talk about anti-TNF treatment or my anti-TNF treatment which I've started about three or four years ago. Um, so I thought I'd just talk a bit about what it is, why I take it, how I take it and then at the end um, I'll just show you how I take it. So obviously not that it's graphic but if you don't like needles or the thought of it then you know don't watch until the very end. So if you enjoy watching this video please remember to like and subscribe um, and I'll just get started. What is anti-TNF? Well it's anti, so sort of against, and TNF is tumour necrosis factor, which sounds quite scary I think, especially when you have like tumour and necrosis in a, in a sentence. But basically um, TNF is a substance in the body, it's a protein, we produce it naturally. Um, but in somebody like me that has an autoimmune condition of ankylosing spondylitis, we overproduce it, which then leads to an increased amount of inflammation and pain and damage to our joints. So basically what anti-TNF does is it works um, on the TNF to block the activity of it and hopefully then reduce the amount of pain, inflammation and damage to our joints. The reason I was offered anti-TNF was because um, I was sort of having progressively increasing amounts of pain and stiffness, my movement had decreased, um, the pain was keeping me awake up th all through the night um, and also I can't take um, sort of traditional non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs because of my ulcerative colitis so I almost sort of skipped that stage of I can't take those um, and really the next stage was anti-TNF therapy so I was offered that and for me it has led to um, a reduction in my inflammation levels, uh, it's a reduction in pain, increased amount of movement, um, a reduction in the amount of stiffness that I get in the morning and ultimately it gives me a better quality of life which is really I think the end goal for all of us really, um, with an autoimmune condition. But there are a lot of things you have to consider um, before you might think about taking them, which I'll go into now. But definitely for me, it has improved my quality of life. And that's not to say that I still don't get sort of flare-ups of increased pain or increased inflammation, but really how it was before I started taking it to how it is now is completely night and day. So I take Humira 40 milligrams um, every two weeks and I inject that and for me um, there are a number of side effects um, but obviously each drug have, has different side effects and they affect people differently but for me I haven't had any side effects taking it um, which is good, long may that continue. And really, there are um, a number of risks which you need to consider. And the main one is obviously anti-TNF therapies do interfere with your immune system. So that does make you more prone to infections, especially obviously at the moment with us going through um, COVID-19. Um, it does increase your risk of certain type of cancers. Um, and obviously your risk of picking up any sort of infections. So those are really, I mean, the main ones that you need to consider. And there are a lot of things that they do to monitor that um, and things that you can do yourself. So whilst there are risks, you obviously have to weigh up the benefits that you get from taking the medication versus the risk. And anti-TNF is a relatively new treatment for ankylosing spondylitis. So the sort of long-term effects are really not known. Um, so you have to weigh that up as well. And it is a long-term treatment. It's not something you'll take for a few months and then stop. It, it is, you know, something that you will take for as long as um, it does benefit you. So some of the things that you 
really need to consider is this isn't obviously is not suitable for everyone and it will be up to your um rheumatologist or whoever provides your care to see whether sorry i'm losing my voice again to see whether it's the right treatment for you it is very expensive and therefore it's not available to everybody and because of that you have to be assessed or i'm assessed every four months using the bath and closing spondylitis disease activity index just to check that I'm still benefiting from it. So that's done every four months. Um, I have to inject, as I said, every two weeks and I have to have my bloods done every 12 weeks and that checks for things like infections. It makes sure that my like, liver and kidneys are working as they should because obviously, you know, it is a very powerful medication and, you know, it's reassuring for me to know that sort of every 12 weeks those things are being um, checked. It Obviously, you have to have it delivered um, fairly regularly. Sometimes I will get a month's supply, sometimes I'll get three months supply. I think that just depends on um, how much stock the company has. Um, if you have signs of an infection, I obviously get cold sores, um, you have to then delay your injections until that um, infection has cleared up. When you do get it delivered, you do need to keep it cold, so it needs to go in the fridge. And that's not to say you have to keep it in the fridge. You can take it out the fridge for so long, um, but it does need to be stored in the fridge. And going along with the fact that you are more prone to infections, you um, should be offered um, a flu jab. And obviously, we're now into September and it's flu jab season. Um, and you know I'm fine with injections and things like that but obviously it's not everybody's cup of tea and, and some people don't like that but obviously I think well if it's being offered it probably will benefit me so um, so yeah you will be offered a, a flu jab and I think at the beginning I was also offered a pneumonia jab so I had that as well. And now I just thought I'd talk you through um, sort of preparing to take your injection and I will warn you when I'm about to take my injection so don't worry if you want to um, tune out at that point. But basically you get your injections in a little box like this or I do and you have to remember that this is my treatment and this is what I do so it's obviously it's not a tutorial it's more just um, an information for you as you know, you might be offered this and you might think, I don't know whether I can take this. Um, it sounds, can seem really daunting when they say, and now you need to inject yourself, you know. Um, but believe you me, it is really, really simple um, and it's nothing to be worried about. So as I say, it comes in, mine comes in a little box and in here I've got two injections and these syringes are pre-filled with exactly the amount of medication so obviously I've got my Humira, my 40 milligrams and things I will check for is I will look to make sure that it's in date so obviously this expires 11-21 so that's in date you will see there is a little window here and I just check to make sure that's clear that there's nothing floating around which might have indicated maybe it hasn't been stored properly um, and obviously I make sure that it is the, the right medication and you've got your little button on the end and obviously this is the stopper here and this is um, sort of prepared for transport um, so I do my checks obviously checking it's in date checking the little window and I'm now going to take the end off so if you don't like needles you might want to stop now um, and basically you've got this little stopper on the end and there's obviously no needle in there um, well there is a needle in there but not sticking out the end and you pull the little yellow stopper out as so and basically what you need to do is you're obviously your skin goes here I'm not going to inject it into my finger um, and this little collar you just push it into your skin and when that's engaged you then push the little button there and it will click and it will hiss and then it's done and when it's done the little window here um, fills up with yellow so you know it's all been injected so I'm now going to go on to 
inject myself um so look away now if you don't like that sort of thing but it is really simple and you know you can't see the needle you know it doesn't hurt it is you know sometimes it might be a little bit stinging but other times you know you can't feel it at all okay we had a quick outfit change so got my injection so i'm just going to make sure that the end is flush against my skin and once that is completely flat then i can push the button so i just like to hold my skin so i can see what i'm doing just put it against my skin push it in a little bit you can hear the click I normally count to 10. And then you can just see a little tiny blip there where it's gone in. And it is as simple as that. And you can see that the little window is all yellowed now. And it really is as simple as that. So now I'm just going to put the little stopper back in back in the end. And this now goes in my sharps bin, which the um, company that deliver my injections um, will then take away my sharps bin um, when it's full. So I really hope you found that this interesting. Maybe it's something you know that you've been considering, but you weren't sure you know what it's like to inject how you feel about your immune system being a little bit compromised you know there is an awful lot to consider and obviously i can only talk about my treatment and my experience um because you know i'm not a doctor i don't work for the company you know this is just me but i really hope you found um this informative and i really hope you tune into my future videos so take care of yourself and i'll see you on the next video Bye.